So here's some notes to help you out with uh, 14.1 through 14.4 out of our physics text. <clears throat> a couple things you need to understand um, as we transfer into chapter 14. Then we're going to start talking about heat and heat as an energy transfer. Um, so we're talking about heat as a form of energy and we're going to talk about it as being measured in joules. And so one of the first things that we have to understand is how do we compare um, uh, the way that the world maybe or the everyday concepts of energy are used and then talk about how do they compare to what we're going to use in these physics formulas and equations as we solve problems. And so one of the first things you need to understand is that 4,186 joules is going to be equated to or equivalent to um, 1,000, now this is really important, small calories or it's going to be equal to 1 we call kilocalorie and that's referred to often as a food calorie or oops as the calories that you see on the back of a food label so when we talk about a calorie typically we're talking about a kilocalorie which is 4,186 joules so you're going to use that as a conversion factor uh, quite often when you're looking at problems especially when you want to compare them to things like our diet or or the calories of energy inside of a substance typically we're talking about its kilocalorie count and we want to compare that to 4186 joules so it takes a lot of joules of energy to represent the energy that we burn every day just being human beings and so understand that kind of going in the next thing we have to talk about is that every particle we've talked a little bit about this but every particle has some sort of internal energy just because there's rotation um, of the electron, also the, the, the nucleus is spinning, and, and we have the vibration itself of the different particles, they're not sitting in, in a permanently motionless state. Even solid objects are vibrating. Now, they're really, really microscopic at the atomic level, but they are vibrating. And so there's always built into them an internal energy. And so the internal energy of an ideal gas can be calculated using U to represent the internal energy is equal to 3 halves um, nRT which should look familiar that has a lot to do with the ideal gas law and um, the nRT obviously you've seen that before and, and so we're talking again here um, that if we got T down to zero, we'd say there'd be no internal energy. Um, but this tells us how much energy something has, um, and we notice that as the temperature increases, its internal energy is going to increase. Um, it depends on how many moles of the gas you have, obviously. So the more gas you have, the more energy you're going to have. But um, we're looking really at the temperature increase as the biggest indicator of how much internal energy we're going to have. Uh, the last thing that we need to talk about is this concept of specific heat and how that affects things. See, as I pour energy or heat energy into a substance, whether that's a metal rod or a, a pot of water and I want to boil it, all of these different things, we'll notice that as we put heat in, we see temperature changes. But not everything raises in temperature, rises in temperature at the same rate. And so we need to acknowledge that different things have a different temperature co um, consumption. Okay. So you can put in the same amount of energy into two substances and get different results. Uh, this, is, this is why, you know, um, if I try to boil uh, sand, okay, it's going to be different at a different temperature. It'll give off heat differently or absorb heat differently than steel would. And so depending on what you're trying to heat up, you're going to notice a different consumption of energy. Um, they won't heat up at the same rate. And so what we find is that the amount of heat energy, so this is Q, this is heat, okay, measured in joules, the amount of heat put in or taken out of a system will equal the mass of that material times C, this is called the specific heat, we'll get to that in a second, specific heat of that substance times the change in temperature. And this change in temperature is going to be measured in degrees Celsius. Now, because it's a change in temperature, you have to understand um, that a degree Celsius is the same as one Kelvin. 
and so it really wouldn't matter what temperature scale we're using we're just acknowledging that it's going by one in the celsius scale and so kelvin or celsius could technically work there and again we're really just looking at the change that occurs and we know how to calculate mass that's kilograms but this specific heat thing is going to be a bit of an issue the good news is there's a table with some specific heats that we use pretty commonly um, and that can be found on, found on page 387 so let's kind of acknowledge page 387 of the text are going to be some pretty common specific heats and if we look real quickly at this specific heat table a couple things to notice right here we have calories or kilocalories per kilogram per deg times degrees celsius that would be if we're trying to use again our kilocalorie value uh, that's not a value we want to use we are going to work in the world of joules and so we are going to come over here and use our joules kilograms and degrees celsius those are standard units we're used to using and so you'll notice that if you have liquid water and you want to raise it one degree Celsius, it takes 4,186 joules. That's what this means. Raising the temperature by one degree takes this many joules per kilogram. So you have one kilogram of iron or still, it will take 450 joules of energy to raise it a degree Celsius. But that's really important because that is way faster than it is to raise water's temperature. Okay? It's 10 times, almost 9 times faster to raise the temperature of metal than it is, that type of metal, than it is to, to raise the temperature of water. And so we start realizing, wow, there's a, there's a lot we can do there. Notice real quick, the human body. Um, we're a little bit easier to warm up than water, but it takes a lot of energy. If our body temperature is dropping, it takes a lot of energy to get it back up. Um, that's why so much of our energy, daily energy, is used just keeping and regulating our body temperature. But the idea here is that we have a, a value that's going to help us calculate. Now, one of the cool applications to this is what we call calorimetry, calorimetry where we, we take, let's say I've got a, an empty beaker, okay? And this is at 20 degrees Celsius. And let's say that I want to come over here and I'm going to pour in, um, I'm going to open up a hose and pour in some water that's at roughly um, 10 degrees Celsius. Well, if I want to know, once I've you know, filled this up to a certain level, I want to know what temperature is this going to settle at, assuming that you know, there's nothing else being added to the system in terms of temperature or heat what temperature are these going to be? Is it going to end up room temperature? It seems like the water is a little cold. 10 degrees Celsius, that's nice. It's a cool glass of water. Uh, it's not up at room temperature. However, okay, is it going to warm up because of the cup so much that it's, it's just not very good? And so we would take things like, let's say the mass of this was uh, 100 grams and it's glass. Okay. And I'm going to add, of my water, let's add, um, let's add 100 grams. Let's just make it really simple. 100 grams of water being in, added into this 100 grams of glass. So here's the thing. What I know is that whatever heat is being taken from, we've got to recognize, heat flows from the warmer into the cool so that's we're going to talk about it later law of thermodynamics but the heat from the glass container is going to go into the water until they're at an equilibrium or a balanced state and so we talk about the q of the um, glass it's going to lose some heat but that loss will be equivalent in size to the the gate the heat gain of the H2O or the water. So we're going to notice that the MC delta T would have to equal MC delta T for our water and our glass would have to be equivalent. Now they both have the same mass of 100 so I get to cancel them only because of that. I go to page 387 looking for some values. I notice that water of course is 4186 and glass is 840. 
So over here, I've got 840 times delta t equals 4186 times delta t2. We have to realize that they're not going to both experience the same temperature change. They can't. Otherwise, these two things wouldn't quite be equal. So I'm trying to go through this problem with you, just kind of give you an idea of how it's kind of designed to work. Um, if we look at it from the perspective that one started at 20 degrees and one started at 10 degrees, okay, the way we would look at this would be 840 times, we'll call it T2, or call it T nu, or, or whatever we want to there, minus its original temperature. Now the glass's original temperature was 20, okay? And this is going to be off assigned, it's going to be negative, but we'll, we'll deal with that. Equals uh, 4186 times that same temperature. This is a critical thing, that they're both going to end up at the same temperature, minus 10. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do now is go ahead and distribute 840T2 minus... And this is going to be a little, again, this will be off because the temperature um, is going to look off, look like it's negative. Um, but 840 times negative 20 uh, comes out to negative 16800. Should have known that. And then over here we get 4186T2 minus 41860. Okay. To finish this problem off, we're just going to go ahead and add our T2s to the same side and move that over. We're going to end up finding what's this temperature that both of them move to. And it should be somewhere between 10 and 20. Now, because the uh, glass changes temperature at a lower requirement, it's going to drop temperature much faster than the water's going to raise temperature. You can finish this off, but I just hope that kind of helps you set this idea of how do we solve these calorimetry problems. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk more in class. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you then.